I fled. I came into my office, I went under my desk, I cried, I cried, I cried like a ten-year-old girl. Hi, welcome to Mimi's Place. And today we're taking on the big lie. And part of the big lie, you know, that Neville Goddard revealed as everyone is you pushed out and that most of the mystics have taught as the law of attraction and what has become known as the law of attraction. It's the 12 laws of mind that you're told about in the Bible and in the Greek myths and, well, and, and all the stories, okay? They're all there. And it's uh, understanding that the outside world is a mirror of the inside. And, you know, people leave nuggets to help you because we're all one being made up of many. And the Father is in our hearts and His Son is in our heads. And, and they already know the story and the story's over. Okay. So they knew they were going to make a Julie or a Rita or a Tom. And that their, you know, entanglement had to be this way and they had to be raised like this and their parents had to be like this and all of this is, is predestined okay the bible tells you i have a perfect life planned out for you you can relax and enjoy it or you can fight it okay whatever you want to do so currently you know if you really step back and look at it you can see that currently uh, humanity is Jesus and it's being uh, tempted by the devil. <laughs> if you believe in me, I'll give you all this. If you believe in me, I'll do all that for you. If you do as I say, then you can have everything. And the reply is, no. You know, I don't think so. I believe in myself. I know God's in my heart. I know his son's in my head, and I know what I think grows. No, I'm not listening to that. Talk to the hand, walk away, you know, and if people want to know more, then you share how you think, what you believe, but not until they ask, you know, you write it on the hearts and minds of your children so that they will pass it on to their children and this is how it grows you know one couple can end up with you know 50 grandchildren you know those two people now made 50 plus people you know that believe in these you know they know it's true they've fallen off the wagon and they got back on and it's you know figuring all that out, that this is not, you know, people struggle like they can turn them on and off, you know, I've never used law of attraction before, this is my first time, no, this is your first time doing it while you were aware you were doing it, you've been doing it all along, so the big lie is that everybody is, you know, responsible, responding to each other which is true but the responding to your belief when they're facing you okay so if you believe that you know your son's a jerk or you believe the outside world can harm you in some way or it can affect you in any way then you know you'll get those kinds of responses back at you. For example, we can, we'll can take something big and then we'll take something personal. So for example, YouTube. Okay, people believe that YouTube will demonetize you and they say so in their terms and service. This is their response to what people have been believing about them. You know, and that they're in bed with um, the government propaganda machine and all this other stuff. 
Okay, so I began this series last Thursday and posted my video. It was up for, you know, I guess a couple hours. And then they took it down, saying I had violated, you know, uh, their terms of service. And, you know, they're not going to give me a strike, but spank, spank. We could have, you know, a little threat. And then off you go. Now, I had brought this up about Praveen Mohan, but you know, I didn't deal with it. <laughs> yeah, that baby grew. And so then it happened to me. And it was funny because they didn't object to most of the video. It was just the, the part about the CCP virus that they objected to. <laughs> you know, and yes, I have a lingering uh, belief that, you know, they're in bed with the government. But again, that is my response to them. You know, that's what I think of them. So that's what they're showing me. And so I, I forgave them. Um, I So the series began last week. I'll put a link in the description below where you can find that video. Uh, but it's understanding that they were only being the... I, I love them. I love you too. This, it goes across the world. I'm spreading the message. It's great. You know? And I'm not monetized. I don't even have enough subscribers to even begin to monetize. You know, it doesn't matter to me. It's it's get the word out. And I'll never monetize. I'm not here to, to make money out of it. Okay? There's a lot of people that do. They come to YouTube. They want to make money. Okay? They want to make videos. I love making videos. It's a lot of fun. You know, and if I get there, okay, great. You know, and and that's fine, but it's not like I'm going it's gonna make or break me one way or another. So I've never really, you know, thought of it that way. And so what the response from YouTube was a change in their terms of service saying that now it didn't matter if you had an you were part of their program or not, whether you were monetized or not, partnership program, um, they get to slap, you know, advertising on your videos if they want. Okay, you realized you weren't making money when you started demonetizing all these people. You know, you need to get those ads out. So you're going to put them out. I got it. I got it. I, you know, I love you guys. Whatever. You know, whatever it takes. But you're never going to make me believe that the people of that corporation aren't good. I'm going to keep forgiving them. And I'm going to keep saying they're blessed. And I know they're better than that. And walk away. I forgave them. They're blameless and I'm blameless. That puppy's gone. You know, if they had to do that because of who they got in bed with. You know, but from the moment I release them through forgiveness, you know, it, it changes. I change how I see it, you know. Understanding comes. It's not for me to judge the people of YouTube. They, they're playing a role. And, you know, it's for me to love them no matter what while they play that role and bless them and realize, you know, you're all going to wake up one day. All for one, one for all. It's all good. You know, and there's a million, billion opportunities. You don't have to get your money from YouTube. So, you know, you don't bitch about it. And, aw, bless their hearts. <laughs> I know they're better than that. You know, and that's it. I forgive them. And every day, you know, at the end of the day, I forgive everyone without distinction. And if I'm holding back any resentment or ugly about it, I'm leaving it with you, Christ. Thank you. Thank you for changing how I see. You know, and you get more and more peace with whatever it is that's yanking your chain. And a lot of people don't understand this. You know, and I understand because I'll, I'll say, um, you know, you forgive them and they'll change or they'll go away. Is they aren't really changing. You're changing. You're changing how you see them. 
they're still playing the same role. They're still doing the same things. But how you see it changes. And it becomes easy to just, okay, love you, brother. You know, I can find another way. It's okay. You do what you got to do. All of you do. It's the best. You know, and out it goes. So, it, it's that kind of thing. Okay? When you're dealing with institutions or corporations or governments, or authorities, big, you know, nebulous monsters we've made. You know, these big great serpents. You know, the you love them. And that's what I mean by you love them. When you forgive, that wipes the slate clean. Wipes it clean. <laughs> okay, what you building now? <laughs> you know, how do you see it now? And God in your heart changes it with your imagination, how you see it. You know, and it's no longer those dirty rats. You did it, right? <laughs> He's gone, eh? Come out and shake it, you dirty yellow-bellied rat, or I'll give it to you through the door. <laughs> now it's... I got you, Blackie. It's all good. It's all good. I love you, man. <laughs> so, it's that kind of thing. Now, when it comes to individuals, you know, Neville Goddard would say everyone is you pushed out, which is a consequence of the law of attraction, like circumstances, conditions, events, and people are what you attract with what you think. What you think grows. Okay? Birds of a feather flock together, meaning people who think alike tend to gravitate towards each other. Okay? And when you understand science and neurons, you'll understand that, guess what? Neurons act like that, and they're social. So everything that's alive is a social being. And humans are social beings. It means they like to hang out together. Okay, party. Everybody likes to hang out together. Everybody likes to party. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> but it, it's you know that gathering I call it the gathering so what happens um, when you come to these laws and you start to understand that so you, your son for example has you know been disrespectful to you throwing things around breaking stuff making nasty comments about your new boyfriend, whatever, you know, he's, he's, he's been a jerk. <laughs> okay. Now, stop. And just think. <laughs> you gotta stop and think about. Okay. You just stop and you think. This is meditation. This is prayer. Okay. When you read something and think about it, or you watch something and think about it, when you receive a response from someone and you think about it, you're praying. What you think grows. What you pray on grows. Okay? That's, that's what that means. So, for example, you know, uh, that's going on. So you stop and you look at it. Okay? I don't like that behavior. Okay. So a person is like a cup. Okay. And the big lie is that they just act like that and there's nothing you can do about it. You know, there's just nothing you can do about it. That that's the big lie. Okay, they're a cup. You know, when you were living objectively then you were like, why is he such a prick? You know? 
Why does he do that? Break my stuff. I'm giving him a place to live. Why does he always trash me? You know, why won't he help? You know, it's not like he's got a job. These are the things you're putting in your mind about this person when you're living in an objective land. Okay? So, you forgive them. You forgive them. It's empty now. You know, thank you for changing how I see this. You know, if he shows it to you again, and what usually happens is, it's like this. Because it's very personal and up close. It'll be... You forgive again. You forgive again. You forgive again. <laughs> and every time, it's thank you for helping me change how I see this. In the Bible, it says, you know, take that splinter out of your eye. You know, then that's what you're doing. Okay, you've put a splinter in your eye about this person. And Jesus says, you know, you just keep forgiving them until it's complete, until it's done, until it's done. Okay, because now you know these laws. So you forgive them until this cup is empty. And now you see them as you see yourself. This is the golden rule. If I'm perfect. If I'm a perfect child of God. So are they. I'm infinite intelligence, so are they. My son is infinitely intelligent. There's only unity, harmony, and love between all of us. I vibrate utter harmony. Nothing could stand in the way of utter harmony and love. We're only one, so of course we're united. You know, so you rebuild it. It's the same thing with organizations, if that's what's tweaking your chain. You know, I know my government represents me. I know they don't think they rule me. I know that my voice is heard and I know that every one of them knows that law and order is important. You know, which is a reflection that you're following the laws. Everything else becomes law and order. Okay? Peace. Alright? It's all good. So it's understanding that. But there are two sides to everything. And in order to see the good in both and bring them all together. And we see this in cooking a whole lot. You know, people putting, deconstructing old recipes, bringing new flavors to it, you know, adding pepper to, 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 to stuff and salt to stuff that you never thought you would put on before. And now it, oh, look, and it enhances it. You know, just a pinch of salt in that uh, chocolate. Just a little tad of coffee in it. Stir it, stir it, stir it. Mm -hmm. That is the chocolateiest chocolate ever. You know, and it's this pulling it together. You know, things you, ah, that'll make it taste nasty. Don't do that. You know, ah, what'd you do? You know, try it. <laughs> so it's understanding that kind of thing. So now you keep forgiving them and you keep plying on the, you know, mental aspects of God and digging into those. And we'll get more into that on a video, in the next video. Uh, we are digging deeper into the aspects of God and that's under the Ultimate Mental Diet um, playlist if you want to check that out and the Applying the Twelve Laws of Mind. But it's understanding that, you know, they had to live their life so they could make those responses for you, okay, and for anyone else they're with, because they're a messenger, and they're a gift giver, and you bless them, and you just keep forgiving them. It's, you know, mental work is the hardest work you'll ever do. It's got... You know, leaps and bounds over physical labor. 
It, it really is. And people like to get lost in physical labor. And that's when your mental, uh, the mundane task, can easily happen because they're about relaxation and the outside world's about you know force. And it's the opposite. So you're you're blending the two and balancing them out. So their response is all them. But they're responding that way because of what you believe about them. Okay, and you have to keep changing it. And especially for people, it's easy to do that for institutions and just drop it and forget it. You know, but the closer it is to you, you know, the more it takes, especially for people. And you may have to just keep forgiving and forgiving and forgiving. And you keep saying, thank you for changing how I see this. You know, he's not like that. I'm not accepting that. No. You know, and this is recognizing they can only respond that way because you put the evil eye on them. Now you're taking the evil eye off. Okay. And it may take a few times to do that. But you keep doing it. You persist until you see what you expect to see, you know, that love has conquered all and changed how you see them. They're still saying the same things they were saying before, but now you hear it differently. The tone is different. The mood is different. Okay. They're all saying the same things. It's how you perceive it has changed. And that's what I mean by, you know, they change. Once you change on the inside, the outside changes. So once you perceive them differently, then they change or go away. Now, a big uh, thing to think about is, you know, how long do I do this? And, and the disciples asked Jesus that in the Bible. You do it until it's complete. Okay? You do it until completion. And this is where time and space can stick its ugly little head and they say, Tick, stick. Why is it taking so long? Maybe you're not just good at this, huh? <laughs> you know? Because you've let the human imagination do that for so long. You know, and just, no, I didn't think that. I thought, and get into the aspects of God. So, no, I didn't think that. Or, no, God forbid, you know, that erases it. No, I didn't think that, erase, 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 whatever resonates with you. You know, and then it's um, fill in the hole you just made, right? Because nature abhors a vacuum. You just made a vacuum. You removed something. So now you fill it back up. What do you fill it back up with? The aspects of God. Okay. And this is what you're thinking and what will grow in your life. Okay. And you just always feel that all is well and all is well. And like Neville Goddard said, you know, when you're feeling that, you know, go to silence. No. I am this God. He's in your heart. He's taking care of you. Okay? You're the baby. He loves you. There's nothing more than he wants for you to learn how to think. So, everyone as you pushed out just means you have all these thoughts and beliefs about this, this, this person. Okay? Or people in general. You know, that you you believe X can be Y. No, thank you for changing how I see that. How long have you been telling yourself that? You're going to have to do it a few times. Okay, so if you just, you know, in the last couple of years, you started telling yourself that, it'd probably go pretty fast. But if you've been doing it for, you know, many moons, then it may take a few times. You're ripping a layer off the consciousness in your heart. 
one that got placed there, you know, by you. It sat in your purse long enough. It came down there. So, you know, up to you what you do with that. And it comes back to that law of attraction. Like, thoughts, beliefs, attract like, circumstances, conditions, events. You know, and just like a neuron, attracting other neurons, making a belief. You know, that social aspect. You know, people do that. So you will find that in this family, they're all think they're, you know, geniuses. And in this family, they all think they're stupid. And in this family, you know, they think you have to kiss everybody's ass. And in this family, they think everybody has to kiss my ass. You know, so and then you battle your demons through that framework. That's your role. That's the character you play. And Neville Goddard writing notes, you know, you don't have that kind of destiny anymore when you come to these laws and come to understand it. You don't have to play that role. You can play any role you want. You know, but you can also just be you. And now you're just perfect. And apply what you've learned in lives. You know, with these laws. And, and see it. And start witnessing. You know, which is forgetting. And changing it. And, you know, then you give testimony. You know, on how great God is. Look what he did. You know. In my world, it was this, and now it's that now. And now I used to have this big old bump on my knee. I don't have it anymore. It's gone. I used to have this callus on my foot. Nope, gone. You know, and it's just gotten better and better and better. Doesn't matter what it is. What I think grows in my life. You know, so I, I hope this helps. Blessings to you. And thank you. Thank you for being you. Where's your coach Lang? Are you afraid of Red Bull, you? Well! I am petrified of him. Well, why don't you pretend that Red Bull, you, is somebody that you're, you're, you're not afraid of? Pretend? Yes. Visualize somebody you're not afraid of, and then attack, like you told me. I'll try. But he's right over there. Ha 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 